Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. Last week, I took this horrible washed out image and I processed it in Luminar 3 and came up with this. A day or two later, I took the same exact image and I processed it in Lightroom Classic CC and came up with this. A day or two after that, I took the same image and I processed it in Capture One and came up with this. In this video, I'm going to do my best to process this washed out image in On One Photo Raw 2019. For those of you that haven't seen any of those other videos I've done where I process this image in the other applications, in the description below this video, I'll have those videos listed so you could watch them. Also, in the description below this video, I'll list all the gear I used, my camera settings, and the exposure info. Now, a little backstory: it was a very, very warm day. It was high noon. It was approaching 100 degrees outside, and as you could see, it was very hazy. So I need to rescue this image. I need to make it look as good as possible. So I'm in the edit panel of On One Photo Raw 2019, and I like to straighten and or crop first. Now I'm not gonna crop this image, but it is a little bit crooked. So I'm gonna go right to the crop tool, and I'm just gonna come off to the right side of the image and until my cursor turns into that circular arrow. And then I'm gonna click with the left mouse button, and I'm just gonna drag it up. So I'm just eyeballing it, um, just to make it straighter. I think that looks pretty good and I'm going to click apply. Now, usually what I go about when I process an image, I look at what it needs most, meaning if a shadows, the shadows of an image are really dark, I'll jump right like to the shadow slider. In this case, the image is really hazy. So I'm going to go right to the haze slider. Now I really don't care for the haze slider in on one photo raw 2019 to tell you the truth, but let's see how it does. Now the way this works, is if you want to add haze, you go to the right. If you want to remove haze, you go to the left. And I'll just keep moving it to the left. And I kind of don't like what it's doing. It's got, it affects the tonality of the image, in my opinion, a little bit too much. So I'm not going to use the haze slider to deal with the haze in this image. Instead, I'm going to go to the effects module right away. And I'm going to go to add filter and I'm going to add a curves filter. And with curves uh, to deal with the haze, I'm gonna go in the lower left-hand corner of the curve. I'm gonna click on that. I'm just gonna drag it to the right. And you can see as I drag it to the right, we're getting rid of that haze. We could do the highlights as well in the top right-hand corner and drag those to the left or drag that to the left, if I could grab it. Just a little bit, I think like that. So I think that uh, is a more effective way, at least for this image, to deal with the haze. I didn't really care for the haze slider. Now I'm going to jump back to the develop module, and then I'm going to process from here. Um, I'm going to bring highlights down. I'm going to bring uh, shadows up, not that much. Up a little bit. See what midtones does. See what contrast does. So I jump around, as you could see, I'll add a little contrast there. I'm going to get a white and black point. I'm going to hold the J key in on the keyboard and click on whites. And I'm going to move it to the right till I see some red come through. And I'm not seeing any red at all. So we're not clipping highlights at all. But I'm going to just make those just a, just a touch brighter. Similarly, for the blacks, I'll hold the J key in on the keyboard, click on blacks, and move that to the left until I see some blue come through. And I'm not seeing any blue, so we're not clipping the blacks at all. So I'm going to bring blacks down a little more. I'm going to add some structure, tiny bit. Uh, again, haze. I'm going to uh, affect the color uh, white balance here. I don't care for it. I'm going to click on this little eyedropper, and I'm going to click on the slate wall because that typically is kind of grayish. And it's a little bit too warm, maybe. So I'm just going to keep clicking on it. 
I think that might be a little better. I'm just actually going to manually come in with the temp slider and just warm it up just a touch from that point. Eh, I think that's okay. So, so far so good. Uh, let's see. Added some contrast. Um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump to the local adjustments and I'm going to add a graduated filter. As you could see, the, the sun was kind of off to left just a little bit. So this side of the uh, photo is in shade and the right hand side's in uh, brighter light. So I want to equalize that a little bit. So I'm just going to go to local adjustments. I'm going to go to the top and I'm going to uh, click on this uh, graduated filter or adjustable gradient as they call it. And the way it's uh, applied in uh, On One Photo Raw 2019, you just kind of click on the image and it's applied. And you can see that by default it has the exposure down. And I want that over here in the right hand side. So I'm going to flip it around. And I'm going to spread it out so it's more gradual. And pull it down a little more. And of course I don't want it down that much, right? As a matter of fact, let's reset it. And let's see if I bring highlights down, if that helps. I think highlights is a little bit more effective. Maybe if I bring midtones down a little more. Yeah, I think that looks pretty good uh, right there. Now we still have kind of this bright patch right here. So I want to deal with that. So I'm going to add another local adjustment by clicking on Add Adjustment. And for this, I'm going to use a brush. And for this brush, I'll temporarily keep exposure down. And I'm going to use the right bracket key to get a larger brush. I want the opacity at 100. And I'll have feathering at 100 as well. And I'm just going to come in here and I'm going to paint on this brighter area. Now obviously it's not what I'm going to keep it at. But it's a good way to see where I'm painting. Then I'm going to go back up here and I'm going to reset exposure. By double clicking on the word exposure, I'll go to highlights and pull those down. Go to midtones, pull those down as well. Maybe I'll take exposure, just not, I'm going to leave exposure alone. So I kind of, eh, not that I like that that much, but that's okay. All right. So I think I'm done with local adjustments. I'll jump back over to develop, and I think I'm actually done with the tone and color tab. Um, I'm not going to do any sharpening in the develop module. I prefer to do that in effects and lens corrections if found my uh, lens fine. I don't need to do anything with transform. So I'm going to jump back over to effects. You remember we have this curves here. But now uh, what do I want to do? Well, I'm going to go to add filter and I'm going to go to a sunshine filter. I know I use this a lot. Those of you that um, watch my videos know that I often use the sunshine filter, but I like it. I, I like what it does. And I'm just going to try a few of the other ones. I like strong. I don't like glow usually. Um, obviously with all that haze I just got rid of, I don't want to add haze with the glow. So I kind of like strong. Sun glow I don't care for either. So I think I'm just going to stay with the default settings for strong. I like what that did. Uh, let's see. I'm going to go to add filter and I'm going to go to the tone filter I think tone enhancer and I don't know what happened there there we go undo that all right um, let's see I click on auto obviously don't like that so uh, what I want to do is I just want to affect the tones a tiny bit more here um, just going to bring the shadows down a little bit more and a little bit more contrast. Bring shadows down a little bit. Uh, just a little bit there. I think that's pretty good. Uh, let's go to um, Color Enhancer. And overall with Color Enhancer, I'm just going to go right to the Saturation slider and kind of boost Saturation. A little bit on the image. All right. I'm going to go to dynamic contrast, which is one of my favorites. Um, I think it, by default, it's just a little heavy. So I'm just going to pull opacity down. 
to something like 60. There's before, after. I think that looks pretty good. Um, I'm going to go back to local adjustments. I want to add another brush. So I'm going to click add adjustment. And for this, I'm going to bring exposure up. I'm going to keep feathering and opacity at 100. I'm going to get a smaller brush by hitting the left bracket key. And I'm just going to paint on the waterfall very carefully. Paint on that waterfall. And then I'm going to readjust the exposure. Don't want it glowing. I just want it slightly brighter. Drop folks' attention more towards that waterfall. Whites up just a touch. I think my eyes are a little fatigued. I think that's a little bit overdone. Typically what I'll do is when I feel like my eyes are tired and I'm overdoing something is I'll walk away from the computer uh, and reassess after about my eyes rest 10 or 15 minutes. I don't have that luxury right now. So I'll, I'll leave it as is, but it may be overdone. It might be a little bit too bright. I'm going to go back to the develop module. I'm sorry, go back to the effects module. I'm going to add a filter and I'm going to finish it off with a vignette. And I'm going to just get a darker vignette. Let's see, well, what the strong looks like. Big softy. Um, I kind of like the strong, but I want to center it more a little bit towards the left. So it darkens the right side a little bit more than the left side, just to even that out a little more. So I'm going to click on this little icon right here. I'm going to hold the space bar in. I'm sorry, I'm going to hold the shift key in while I move it. And see, I could move it around now when I hold the shift key in. So I'm going to just offset it to the left a little bit more. So there's uh, before, after might be just a little bit strong so I'm gonna pull it back a touch there's before after I'll pull it back just a little more there's before after so I think I'm done so here's an overall before oops there's an overall before and there's after before after so you see we were able to make a decent image in On One Photo Raw 2019 as well. Now, if you'd like to compare it to the other images, again, this was the Luminar image. And Luminar was at a disadvantage. It's taken a while to render uh, because it was the first one I did. And after I did it, I realized I probably should have brightened up the waterfall a little bit. So Luminar was at a bit of a disadvantage because sometimes... And quite often, I'll process an image, then a day or two later, look at it, and then tweak it. And I didn't tweak Luminar. But I did take those ideas, and when I did it in Lightroom, and it's taking a while to render, uh, I did those tweaks here. And then in Capture One, kind of has all my tweets, or tweaks, <laughs> not tweets, and taking a while to render. And um, I think Capture One is probably my favorite of the four I've done. And I probably uh, could have uh, made the others look very similar to Capture One if I wanted to. But I was just kind of letting the processing take me wherever it took me. And this is what I ended up in On One Photo Raw 2019. Thank you, everyone that watches my videos. I truly do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon. <laughs>